So I really wanna share with you what we've been up to before I sit down and begin to share with you a little bit more about what's been going on behind the scenes. Um, behind me is where we are gonna be putting our veggie garden. So you can see we've cleared the land and we've leveled it out. We even have some of our beds made. We're gonna have six of those giant, beautiful beds and we're gonna be planting all of our veggies there. And over here, is basically where we're planning on putting our fruit orchard. And you can see we have cleared this land. Now, you might not be able to tell, but we have cleared out a lot of guinea grass from this part of the property. If you go back and look at previous videos, you can see that it's covered in basically 10, 15 foot tall guinea grass. It's not there anymore. And we've actually just put down our first cover crop, sun hemp here. Uh, and we're clearing that back part. You can see our seeds coming up and we're preparing to grow a fruit orchard. So this is so huge. We're so excited to be doing this. We're a long way away from it being in full fruition, but had to share that before I sat down for this video today. What up you guys, it's Christina and I'm so happy to be here with you today right now. <laughs> it's been a really long time since I've just sat down and done a catch-up video with all of you and just shared what's going on in my life, especially behind the scenes. So today I figured I would sit down with you and give you a monthly recap, if not the past couple of months recap, <laughs> um, and just what's really been happening. Now for those of you who've been following me on Instagram, you probably already know most of this, but I haven't really gotten a chance to dive into too much detail here um, sharing with my YouTube community. So. Today, I will be doing just that. So about six to seven months ago, me, Cash, and Coco moved to Hawaii with the intention of making this our new home. And every single day, we have been working towards making this feel like our home. And I know from the outside looking in, everything must look perfect, right? Because we just moved to Hawaii, it's magical here, everything's beautiful and um, you always get to see the highlights reel, right? But oftentimes people don't actually talk about all of the challenges they really face when they move to a new place and all the difficult things that do come up that they work through. So that's my intention today. I'm gonna be sharing with you something a little deeper, a little bit more meaningful to me right now, a little bit more real. <laughs> real in the sense that it's actually what we've been going through, what we've overcome to get to where we are now. We're all human. We all go through life's challenges. And I really feel that it's how we go through them and how we overcome them that makes us who we are. Since we've moved to the Hawaiian Islands, we have dealt with a massive centipede infestation. Massive. Uh, a mold remediation in our house, as well as about a month ago, I was bitten in my sleep by a brown recluse spider, and I'm well on my way now to a full recovery. So many of you have had questions for me about how I've managed these things, and so I'll do my best to answer uh, the majority of the questions to the best of my ability today. All of those situations were handled with care and of course in the most natural and organic of possible ways. And in the midst of all of that happening, we've been putting in the majority of our energy into working on our land, clearing out our field of guinea grass. You can't see it anymore because it's not here. Previous videos, you can go back and check it out. Um, but behind me used to be guinea grass and now we have cleared it, we've just put in our first cover crop and we're working at growing our own fruit orchard and our own veggie garden. So we've been putting in so much of our effort into that. Before I dive in, I do just wanna say this, being on the islands has been a blessing and there's so much magic here. So in me sharing about mold and centipedes and spiders, my intention is not to put the islands down or make it look scary in any way. I'm just sharing my experience and what's happened. We absolutely love it here and we do think it's magical. Um, at the same time, us being here and having experiencing these things, it's not necessarily something people talk about that much, right? I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Anyways, my intention behind that is 
I only speak positively of Hawaii and it's such a blessing to be here. I'm mainly just sharing my personal experiences and how we've overcome them. And maybe it will help some of you here who've had a similar experience and you're looking how to overcome it naturally or you're trying to find solutions yourself. So let's first talk about the centipede infestation that we encountered in our house when we first moved in. Well, actually it was the centipede and the mold infestation that we encountered at the same time because when we moved in, uh, we basically moved into a fixer-upper house that had been abandoned for almost 15 years. Like very few people had come in and out of the property since then, but as you can imagine, the critters took over, mold took over, and uh, it's been our intention that we will bring the house back to life, primarily the land. Our focus has always been bringing this land back to life. This is why we moved here, was to grow our own food. Um, but within our first two months of being in the house, um, also mentioning our two week quarantine we had to do at the beginning, I think we saw more than 70 centipedes in the house. Now all different shapes, sizes, colors, and I say different shapes and colors because each one of them looks like a crazy alien. And nobody tells you about centipedes until you get to the islands. And I have to say, I, I've done my fair share of screaming in the house and doing my best to be compassionate to try and move them outside. But I've also been afraid of being bitten by one because it's apparently worse than being a wasp sting. Now, knock on wood and Thank you that Cash and I both have not been bitten by one. Uh, we don't plan to be bitten by one. Um, however, it did take us a bit of time to figure out how to get rid of the infestation naturally because everybody immediately messaged us and said, you know, just get your house sprayed by a, you know, termite company or, you know, a pest control company. Let them use the chemicals. They won't go away otherwise. And uh, this definitely didn't feel right to me. I'm very much against all of those harsh chemicals, especially since we walk around barefoot. We have Coco in the house. Coco's our puppy. So we tried a few things first that began to work, and then we found some solid things that work. And I'll share those with you right now. So the first thing that we did very carefully was disperse diatomaceous earth underneath our house. Our house is actually elevated a little bit, you know, it's on stilts, but maybe just three feet up. And we figured that it was very wet and moist under the house and warm, which is where centipedes like to be. So we dispersed very carefully wearing masks, uh, diatomaceous earth all underneath the house. Um, and diatomaceous earth is basically like shell matter. It does also move them out of the area of your house. Um, so for those of you looking for a more natural way of doing it, yes, we use diatomaceous earth. You do just have to be very careful not to breathe it in because they're basically ground up shells and if you breathe it in, it's kind of like breathing in fiberglass. Um, it can hurt your lungs as well. So that was the first thing that we did. Um, I also had many of my friends tell me to get a diffuser and diffuse peppermint throughout the house uh, because they hate the smell of peppermint. Both of those things worked to a certain degree um, but they didn't completely get rid of the centipedes. We went from seeing seven or eight a day to maybe two a day. The next thing that we did was get rid of all types of pots or things that could be carrying like warm water or plants that would cup warm water around the house um, because that's typically where centipedes are. So we had a landscape guy come in and basically clear the area around the house. That helped a lot. And the final thing that we did that I really do feel that made the most difference is we searched long and hard for a natural and organic uh, spray company to come in. Now, even though you could consider them to be pest control uh, or you could call them pest control, they were a very different company, super ethical about the way that they do things without chemicals. They make their own mix of spray using rosemary and eucalyptus that is non-toxic, not harmful to animals, not harmful to our puppy Coco or to us, safe to walk on, and we felt so much more comfortable doing that. Now, we had to do that uh, four times. We had to do four treatments before we finally saw 
that no centipedes were coming back and basically it didn't kill the centipedes, it just moved them out of the house. And so um, they basically put the treatment all under the house and in the house and it worked like a charm. Now, this isn't something I can recommend to you because I, I think maybe perhaps the company that helped us on the island makes it themselves, but I'm just letting you know that there are natural solutions. So you can maybe Google, you know, if you're ever dealing with this kind of a situation, you know, natural sprayers and ask them if they can create their own or if they have their own that's non-toxic um, that could help you with infestations like these. I hope that answers your questions <laughs> about our centipede infestation. Basically, I've, I've seen enough centipedes to last me a lifetime. 70 centipedes in two months was more than I could handle. We still do see like one every, you know, week or every other week, but definitely nowhere near the amount we did when we first moved in. I, I'm still a bit traumatized by it and still cannot walk on the floor at night without using a flashlight. <laughs> Our mold remediation. I have so much to say about this because I feel it's a really important topic and most people don't realize how bad mold is until it's already too far gone, if that makes sense. There's so many people that have mold in their homes and don't realize it. And if you've never done a mold test before in your house, I highly recommend getting one done um, because you could have mold in your house and it might not be visible. In our case, what happened was is when we moved in, we had a two week quarantine and we realized as soon as we moved in that the washer and dryer were leaking. And when we moved them back away from the wall, we noticed that there was a huge spread, a five foot spread of mold lined along the back of the washer and the dryer. So it wasn't until we moved the washer and dryer that we knew the mold was there and we saw it. Before that, it was just this very musty, awful smell, like a bad musty sock smell right <laughs> and it wasn't until we found out about how bad the mold situation was that i started to be really fearful of it how this passed inspection we have no idea um, the inspection company was actually very kind they refunded us our money um, it was a it was a little bit of a big ordeal right because you know you're not really supposed to be able to buy a house that has five feet of mold in it um, especially if you're not notified about it. And, and we were quarantining there for two weeks, so we were in the house with the mold. And so what we did during that two week time period and after to get rid of the mold were a few things. The first three things that we immediately did were take activated charcoal because we knew we were breathing it in, we knew we were exposed, and activated charcoal basically uh, absorbs toxins and removes them from your body. So we started taking activated charcoal. We started uh, diffusing tea tree oil, especially in that area and all around the house. And we sprayed hydrogen peroxide on the area. Now we didn't touch it, we didn't clean it, but hydrogen peroxide keeps it from spreading and basically holds it down until you can get a professional to come in and remove it. And yes, we did get a professional team of people to come in and remove it. And we were advised not to touch the mold or move it because it could spread the mold spores even further. Um, but what we did is we taped off the room. We taped off the laundry room as much as we could just to like keep the air from coming in. We put towels on the floor so that air couldn't like filter through in any different way. Um, and when the professional company came in, they removed all the walls in our laundry room uh, they did like a huge cleaning, um, believe that they used a lot of hydrogen peroxide and probably other scary things as well, but they removed the mold and they left this giant diffuser in our laundry room for three days straight to basically suck all of the moisture out of the walls. Now all of that took a little bit of time, right? That room was uh, taped off and plastic wrapped. It kind of felt like a haunted house to some degree, like the scary room. We knew we weren't allowed to go in there. Um, and it was taped off because obviously mold is toxic and uh, for anybody who knows how bad mold can be for you, to smell it can be extremely detrimental for your health. So in the process of all this happening, and as you can imagine, this wasn't an overnight fix. It took weeks, if not three weeks, a month. Uh, we had to figure out different ways 
to keep our health because there were times where we would get headaches or feel a little bit more tired being around the mold. Any type of mold exposure will do that to you. So we were definitely making sure we were green juicing every day, taking activated charcoal, definitely loading up on our supplements. Um, Cash and I take Sun Warrior supplements. Um, oh, and we got two air doctors for our house. I'm gonna touch on that for a quick second because I do feel like having the air doctors in our house were a game changer. Um, so if you're in Hawaii, there are pretty much two things that people will tell you you need in your house. One will be a dehumidifier and the other will be an air purifier uh, to help you with mold or musty smells or fumes. Um, and we got two air doctors in our house and they were a blessing. We put one in our living room and right by our bed. And essentially what it does is it makes sure that the air that you breathe is clean. And the air doctor removes 99.9% .9 of like 0.003 microbes from your air. It removes mold spores, uh, viruses, any type of bacteria that might be airborne, uh, smoke fumes. If you put a cigarette in front of it, it changes colors so it'll let you know that your air is toxic. I was so grateful for their products that I ended up reaching out to them just to say thank you and to say, oh my gosh, I'm so impressed with your product. Thank you for developing an air purifier that's basically saved our life during a quarantine and we have a mold remediation going on right now. It's helped us so much. Um, and they were so kind to respond back. And um, I just want you all to know that this is not sponsored. They are not paying me to tell you this. I'm genuinely saying that having an air filter in our house uh, was a game changer for us in addition to all the other things that we were doing. And it let us sleep soundly at night. And as a gift, Air Doctor is basically giving all of you, my followers, 50% off their air purifier machine. That's $300 off their machine. Um, that's huge. <laughs> it's, I think it's bigger than their Black Friday sale. Um, and they've done that ever so kindly uh, just because I've established a relationship with them and we connected over this and they've been so helpful. And my intention is to only help people who do come into these kinds of situations. Like if you're worried if you have mold in your house or if you live with someone who smokes or even if you were caught in the wildfires in California, get an air doctor for your house. It is so important that the air that you breathe be clean because if you are not using a filter, then your body becomes the filter. And that's when you can start seeing some serious health problems, especially if you're dealing with mold or airborne bacterias. For those of you who are interested in checking out Air Doctor or getting one of their machines, please check them out. I've included a link for you in the description below where you can get 50% off, $300 off this machine. They have been so generous and kind to offer this to all of you. Um, definitely check them out. So yes, for our mold remediation, <laughs> diffusing tea tree oil, make sure your air doctor is running at all times, uh, spraying the area with hydrogen peroxide until you can get professionals to come out and remove it. Don't try to do it yourself. Taking activated charcoal, uh, just to make sure that you're absorbing the toxins and flushing it out of your body. Taking your supplements, getting enough sleep, really taking care of yourself. And if it is that bad that you none of those situations work, I definitely recommend moving. Having mold in your house is no small matter. It's actually a really big thing and people can get sick for years uh, because of mold exposure. So I feel that we were very, very lucky uh, in dealing with this remediation, especially with the amount that we saw and how it was handled. and. We got on it quickly, but I, I will have to say, I think we were very, very lucky. Um, so I hope that this can help all of you somehow. Now for the most recent thing that's happened uh, in the past month. Uh, <laughs> I don't really want to talk about this, but I will do it just because many of you know that I was bitten by a black widow spider um, more than a decade ago when I was living in Costa Rica and I was climbing a cacao tree and that experience was horrific. I mean, the weirdest part is that it was on my same shoulder <laughs> 
and um, it felt like I was reliving this experience again, but definitely not to the ex that extreme degree. Now, to say that I can compare this bite to a black widow is crazy. I don't know anybody else who's been bitten by a black widow and a brown recluse before, but maybe spiders just like me. That being said, I actually like spiders. I'm not afraid of them. I just don't know why they want to bite me so much. Um, it's funny, I've had a few people send me things saying, oh, well, maybe the spider's your spirit animal. I don't think it's that. I think it's just wrong place, wrong time type of a thing. Um, now, that being said, I was sleeping uh, when I was bitten by the spider. We were actually working in the land all day. We'd gone to sleep. I'd taken a bath that night, and when I woke up the next morning, I noticed I had three huge like prongs filled with pus on my shoulder. I did not have that when I went to sleep that night, so I know I was bitten in my sleep, and it escalated quickly. I'll just say that, as most venomous spider bites typically do. Now, with my black widow spider bite, my shoulder dripped pus immediately and like the flesh just started opening up immediately and within three days I was peeing blood. This was nothing like that. This was definitely a burning, itching sensation, turned red very quickly. Yes, my flesh did open up quickly, um, but I had a different knowledge and a different set of skills um, dealing with this bite because I'd been bitten before. So the first thing that I did uh, that I know works because it worked on my previous bite was I crushed and grated raw garlic. I mixed it with a little bit of African Tulsi basil and I put this uh, mixture uh, onto my shoulder. And uh, I have pictures of that that I can show, but I kept it on there for half a day. Now, trust me when I say that this is no comfortable sensation. It's a very raw, burning, painful sensation because essentially the garlic and the Tulsi are doing a combination of killing the infection while at the same time pulling out the venom. And I definitely knew that it was venomous because I had these clumps like forming in my throat, these weird bumps um, that I could feel. And um, I, did, I did go and see a professional as well as the Kauai Pharmacy here on the island. Um, and I received help from both. Uh, but it wasn't until probably about a week later, a week and a half later that it was confirmed uh, as a brown recluse. Now, now this definitely scared people because some people were like, oh, we don't have a brown recluse on this island. It must be a brown villain spider or a brown this spider. Um, I'm only sharing this because I did have a doctor look at my shoulder and I was said to have, I was, like it was looked at and it was said to be a brown recluse spider bite. So um, I'm just sharing that with you because that's what I was told by the doctor who looked at my shoulder. So after my first day of applying the garlic and the basil, I let it dry out. Um, and it took probably about a week to dry out because it just looked disgusting and you could tell that like there was a bit of a battle going on in there, right? Between the venom and the healing and the wound trying not to open up. Uh, but I kept it super clean. Uh, hydrogen peroxide every day, African Tulsi on it every day. After the first day, I didn't apply garlic anymore. And uh, my good friends at Kauai Pharmacy made sure to bring all their tinctures for me and all of their just healing remedies from here on the island. They're so wonderful. I'll, I'll include links for their farm here below. Um, they're basically a medicinal farm here in Kauai and they do only plant medicine. They're just amazing. Check them out. They've been so supportive. They came over here and made poultices for my shoulder, made me tea. Um, and I took, a lot of, I took a lot of supplements. I take the Sun Warrior supplements. So that was how I got through that and just making sure that every single day I was disinfecting it and um, just like allowing it to flush through my system. Definitely not a comfortable sensation, definitely not a fun experience. Uh, but I think I felt a lot more calm this time go around than I did my first time. So I am about a month past this whole experience and you can see that it definitely has scarred my shoulder. Um, I will work at getting that scar to go away, but you can see uh, basically where I was bitten and it's like a, it's a large area for sure. So yes, 
all of that happened in the midst of me and Cash trying to grow our own fruit orchard and get our garden going um, and also get the house up to speed. I haven't even started to talk about our house yet. For anybody who's ever moved into a fixer upper, bless you. I don't know how you've done it because we're still trying to take things a day at a time and we're realizing that, I mean, it's probably gonna take a couple of years just to get our house to be fully livable and that's okay, right? That's okay because we moved here for the land and that's what's most important. But goodness gracious, to anybody who's moved into a fixer upper, you're my hero, teach me your ways. <laughs> At one point, Cash and I were just laughing because it was like, what more can go wrong, <laughs> right? No washer and dryer for five months. We still don't have a washer and dryer because they take so long to get to the island. Um, even though we've ordered with Home Depot long, long time ago, We're still waiting on that. Uh, our showers broke, our faucet broke, our freezer broke. Um, it just felt like everything was breaking. But I think that's expected if you're moving into a house that's been abandoned uh, or not fully lived in for a really long time. We've also dealt with our fair share of homesickness. It's not as bad now as it was in the beginning, but definitely when we first arrived, we were both very homesick. <laughs> I mean, you guys can imagine, I miss my judo so much, um, but he calls me all the time. He encourages me, he tells me to go for my dreams, he can't wait to see me for the holidays, and he just, he's just the best, so. And even though all this is happening, Cash and I have still managed to love life. Even in the midst of the pandemic, with so much fear happening, so much craziness during the election, and just everything going on, every single day, we take time to meditate, be grateful, to pray, to make sure that we're nourishing our body with good foods, to get in our exercise, whether it be together or apart. Uh, Cash has found some basketball groups here that he really loves, that he's been a part of, and that makes me super happy. He's found like, you know, his group of guys that he likes to be around, and um, I'm finding solace here being able to work on the land and grow my own food, which has been a dream of mine for a really long time, and we get to be together. So even though things are not perfect, we understand that there's always something to be grateful for. And every single day, we are counting our blessings. There's so much more I could say right now, but then this video would go on forever and ever, and um, I'm hoping that you've enjoyed just this tiny little recap of this video. If you have liked this video, if you've liked just me sitting down and talking with you, please give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button because this is life. This is my life. There's only more to come. And I'd love to hear more about your experiences in the comments. If you've ever dealt with or if you can relate to any of the things that I've talked about today, whether it be a centipede infestation or mold or a spider bite, being homesick, growing your own food, I would love to hear from you. I've put a ton of good links below for you. So if you're interested in checking out Air Doctor, Kauai Pharmacy, uh, any of the other remedies or things that I talked about in this video, please click on the links in the description below. Um, some goodies waiting down there for you. You can hear Coco barking <laughs> in the back and you can hear all the birds singing right now, right? It's like a symphony of birds, it's beautiful. And it's getting pretty dark, wow. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you spending this time with me. Thank you for being a part of my community. Thank you for allowing me to share so openly. I really appreciate your kindness. I can't wait to see you all in my next video. Sending you all my hugs and my love.